Hello and a wonderful good evening all the way from Europe and Greece from me and um, it's our second um, second our journey community update. Uh, as you already know, we've got Kevin Billet as, as our guest and he's um, already waiting to come on. And I just really wanted to take a moment to say hello, to welcome everybody here. This is um, evening time for Europe. It's um, middle of the day or morning for, for America. And while well, our Aussie mates are, I think, still sleeping, as you know, Brandon is in Australia. She's just getting ready for the very first journey intensive over there at the Gold Coast. And um, their trainers training and set up days tomorrow. So if you are hearing this from Australia and you still haven't joined them or want to come to Satsang or to the community meeting in the afternoon, please do so. It's Gold Coast this weekend. It's Sydney next weekend. And then we got Brandon winging her way back to Europe where she's um, eagerly awaited in, in Netherlands, UK, um, Germany, Bratislava, Slovakia, and also in Israel and, and Tel Aviv uh, for the journey intensives there. So it's been a full on time. It feels like summer finished and we kind of hit the ground running. We had a live webinar with Brandon and uh, that was attended and seen and, and um, followed by a few thousand people. So it was absolutely fabulous to watch that and to, to feel the energy when it comes through your computer screen. It always amazes me how that is possible, but it somehow works. So anyway, I'm kind of talking a little bit here because I can see that people are joining us. So I give myself a little bit more time and... Um, this is also the community update that kind of follows on from my monthly newsletter. And uh, the monthly newsletter tells you what kind of where Brandon is, what she's up to, where Brand, where Kevin is, what he's up to, what's happening with the journey community, some amazing testimonials. So we just want to make sure that we keep the community spirit alive, that we kind of all know what's going on, what's happening. And I can't really drag this out any longer and would like to take this opportunity to welcome our guest for tonight, Kevin, to, um, to this uh, community um, webinar. Thank you so much, Kevin, for being here. Good evening. It's good evening in the UK as well. Thank you with all my heart for being here. I'm really aware of that this is a, a challenging time for you or a or a tender time, I think challenging is not the right word, a tender time for you, where I believe that many of, of, of our journey family have seen the Facebook posts, they are aware, they do know that your beloved father has passed away last week and um, I knew him well and so the sadness kind of was everywhere, you know, not just with you and and uh, so first of all my my deepest sympathy and I'm really really sorry that um, I couldn't do an in-person hug that it had to come via email or phone or I can, so wait, it, uh, I can wait until but, I see we, you <laughs> but yeah. we've been very much very much connected during this time as well we and I just wanted to um, let you speak a little bit about what this week has been like for you I think it's a beautiful time for everyone yeah. to be aware of what it means and hear it from you, what it what it means and what we can, I think what we can all learn from something like that. I think yeah. uh, the community would really love to hear that. It's, uh, it's been an intense time, Gab, because um, Dad and I have been very close since since I was born. Uh, my my mum suffered from po postnatal depression after I was born and so Dad played both mother and father to me. And obviously, there's a bond that um, that comes in, in that type of relationship uh, beyond, I think, a normal parenting bond, you know. And um, although Dad has been a full-on and sometimes feisty character, and although we've often disagreed and sometimes argued and occasionally fought in life, the bond of love between us has been immense. And so even though he lived to a ripe old age of 88, it was a, a shock that he passed. And it, it's been um, a huge, huge heart-wrenching loss. 
and it's taken place at a time which has been uh, marked in some unusual ways. You know, I'm, I'm on my own here at home in Wales. Brandon is in Australia, as you announced. My son Mark is in New Zealand. You and Kathy are in, <laughs> are in Greece. And so it's been, first of all, a, a little strange not to have many beloveds around me. My sister Debs, a lot of people will know, and she's been here and has been a beautiful support. But a lot of the people who normally would be there, as you say, to give the physical hug as well as the uh, the virtual hug, um, <laughs> they, they've, they, they're living in different parts of the world at the moment. And it's been very strange as well to have the book launch for the new book on freedom de de uh, for, from freedom from depression to be coming out and heading into launch at the same time because it, it's it's been a little surreal in that respect is the is the truth because when i posted online about dad's passing of course i've had um, the most enormous loving embrace prayers coming my way coming deb's way coming brandon's way on facebook on messenger via emails via texts i mean it's it's been a huge huge support so massive thanks to everyone who who has um, sent love sent blessings in that way uh, the strange thing has been that the day before dad died i had sent out messages asking for support for the book launch and so mm -hmm. I've simultaneously had <laughs> all these congratulatory messages come in and, um, you, you know, gratitude for the book, wishing me well, hoping it reaches the people it needs to reach. And so a lot of enthusiasm. And I mean, in a previous life, I, I don't know what I would, would have done with that. And this time has been, it's been precious, I think, in a number of ways and one of the ways is in recognizing that life goes on and life is often messy and that even in the messiness all we can do healthily is to stop and to open and to embrace the totality of life as it shows up so to accept things as they occur to open emotionally with that and to surrender into the core of it and so, of course, that's what I've been doing since uh, a week ago today when, when Dad passed. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was saying to you earlier on, Gabby, that um, it's been a deeply profound and revealing time because the, the previous experience I've got of a parent dying was 27 years ago when my mum died at the age of 58 after a long illness. And... That was prior to journey. This would have been 1991. Prior to the journey, prior to any insights that I had into emotional health, into self-inquiry, into direct experience, into the core skills that, that I've learned from Brandon and the journey. And mum's death was the first of a few catalysts that drove me into the deepest depression I've ever experienced in my life mm -hmm. because I didn't have the coping skills. I was devastated. I was in massive grief. I was in huge shock and I didn't have the means to open with that. I didn't know what to do with it as most people don't. And so I partly grieved and then I partly distracted myself. I partly felt the loss and I more tried to justify or to argue with or to reconcile internally with my thinking what had taken place. And of course, I couldn't justify, I couldn't reconcile to any emotional completion the death of a woman I loved again from birth at the age of 58 in, in such a cruel way. And so it became very detrimental in my life that I bottled up emotions, that I suppressed emotions, that I threw myself into work headlong without really having any healthy way through it. And the contrast this time has been enormous. Of course, with dad being 88, there, there is a difference and I admit that. It's, yeah. um, it, it, it's a different expectation when a parent dies at a good old age than when they die in, in middle age. But my experience has been radically altered this time. 
because with all that I've learned, all that I've experienced through the journey, it set me up for a completely different realization in dad's passing. The first part of that that I'm so grateful for is that, you know, again, to contrast, after mum's passing, there were so many things that remained unsaid. Even though there was the opportunity for us to say these things before she went, we never really sat and opened. We never cried together. We never told each other how much we meant to each other, how much we loved each other. We never apologized to each other. We never forgave each other. And so it took me years of journey work to clear out those issues and to come to absolute forgiveness and completion with mum. Now, the blessing I've had with dad is that that happened about 10 years ago, 10 or 12 years ago, where we'd come to complete forgiveness of each other. And there was a lot to, to forgive, you know, from me to him and from him to me, because we've had a We've had a ferocious relationship, you know, a ferocious love, but also a, um, a, a sharp and some, sometimes um, tumultuous relationship. But about 10 or 12 years ago, we both realized about the same time that there was nothing left to say, that we had accepted each other the way we are. We had forgiven each other for anything that we held on to from the past. And there was, there was nothing left to do or say. And the result with dad in the most beautiful, extraordinary way for that, those years, the last decade or more, is that whenever I've talked to him, whenever I've seen him, all I've experienced is love and gratitude for who he is. Now, I mean, you know, he got softer as he got older, but he could still be a cantankerous old puppy, you know, <laughs> and he could still I mean, have some... Uh, challenging opinions. He could still come out with silly stuff that would have wound me up in the past. And it just ceased doing that. Dad was free to be who he is. He was free to express whatever opinions he expressed. And the, the honest truth is, all I could feel for him was love and gratitude that he was still here. And I felt the same thing from him Years ago, he, he said to me, and he, he doesn't really know about journey work. He didn't know about uh, emotional opening and, and any of our, our work at all. But he, he just said to me on a telephone conversation, I'm so glad you've forgiven me for all the things I did wrong when you were a child because our relationship <laughs> has totally changed and it's deepened. And he said, I, I really appreciate that. And I could tell that he was tearing up as he was speaking to me. And I didn't say much, you know, and... Uh, I just went, yes, of, of course. And, you know, it was almost like, whose father is this? He must have got a wrong number or something. He was words coming from that. And so the conversation ended. And the first thing I did was call Deb and said, Deb, you know, have you ever shared with Dad that you know, we've had issues with him and we've had campfires and he's been there regularly and we've come to forgiveness? And she said, no, I'd never mentioned that. And I went, wow, wow. This, is, this is interesting that... Um, he picked up on it in consciousness. Now, Brandon always says, you know, if the web of consciousness is tickled in one place, then it resonates in all consciousness. Mm -hmm. I do believe that's yeah. the case, that in the forgiveness that had taken place in the letting go and the acceptance and the healing that I'd experienced, there was a way in which we're obviously connected, and he picked up on that too. But I also think there was a practical aspect to this as well, because... I think he got it that I'd stop judging him. He got it that I didn't want him to be any other way than the way he was, that he had permission to be fully himself and to express from that. And so there was a, a practical result as well. And it's been, a, it's been a love fest since that time, uh, Gabby. So that's the first major part of this. And then the second part was, um, although Dad said health issues for a long time, we, we had not expected him to go at this time. He... Mm -hmm went into hospital for um, a minor procedure uh, to have a heart pacemaker fitted. And it all went wrong and unraveled. And um, he, he died about nine days after going into to hospital. And so it was a massive shock. And of course, the body responds to that. It responds with a, a shaking, with a sense of, of lostness, with a sense of... of absolute loss and a disorientation and a huge grief followed threat through that in waves and 
having learned what I've learned over the years with, with Brendan, I knew that the invitation was to stop and to open and just to let it come. And so that's what I've been doing and have been supported in for the last uh, the last week. And day by day, you know, my body has been shaking. Waves of emotions have come, sometimes tumultuous emotions, sometimes subtle emotions, sometimes overwhelming or obliterative emotions. And then in the heart of meeting all of it, this realization, this at first a glimpse and then a full immersion into the peace that is in the heart of all this and the waves of love that have come through. And so from day to day, there's been the experience of a, um, a roller coaster of emotion and of letting go and of grief that has led me deeper and deeper into the peace and, and the love that I know is at the heart of all existence. And that has been a profound experience that I'm truly grateful for. Um, I've always heard Brandon say that there was no grief that could not be fully met and cleared within seven days. Now, whenever I've referenced that in the past, I've said, okay, this is what is taught. And I don't personally know that to be true. And one week on from Dan's death, I can honestly report that I know that to be true. The grief has lifted. Still, there is a sense of, of loss and the body shakes from time to time and emotions come up. A lot of sadness has, has been coming up in the last day or so. Uh, but when I open with it, it's a sadness that lasts for minutes. There's no story around it. I've not been trying to make things different. I've not been trying to reframe myself. I've not been fighting the fact that Dan's physical form has left. And in the heart of all this, I can honestly say the grief has worn through in seven days. Um, or, yes, just it's slightly mm -hmm. under seven, seven days as we speak here, hours, hours less. And so, mm -hmm. yes, an, an emotional, um, an, an emotionally intense experience. But I've been really, I, mean, I want to say, strangely grateful for having so much time on my own in that. Yes, I've had beautiful support from you know close friends, Neil and, and Katie. Yes, Deb and, and her husband, Steve, have been here. Uh, my nephews have been here, but most of the time has been on my own. And it's just allowed me to stop and to open and to let go. And a week later, I'm left in the place of, of a real deep, deep gratitude for the effect that Dad had on me in my life for the influences that he had on me, for the, the mentorship that he showed me. Um, he's taught me to live life with the brakes off, to really put out a vision and then to, to just go for it, to surrender into whatever action needs to take place. He's taught me that you can be strong and tender simultaneously, that you don't need to be tough in order to be strong that you can, as Mitem so beautifully says here, you can have the strength of a rose of a like yeah. this, you know? And I think <laughs> more, more, most of all with Dad, he's taught me to love without fear of loss. And that is something that I recognize throughout my life, despite the, the hooks that I've had or the fixation I've had, I do recognize that I've loved unconditionally. And I believe that's a, a, an influence of Dan. So, there it will be when when his um, funeral service takes place on Monday. There will be an honouring and um, a celebration of his life, and um, it's going to be a tough day. But still, the same the same invitation, just to stop and to open, and to explore the direct truth of the experience. And in mm. that, my continued experience is that there's wholeness here. There's deep peace here. There's uh, there's a fulfillment here, and there's an amount of of lightness around everything. And so that's been my week. Gab. Thank you for asking. Beautiful. It's um you know I told you earlier today that um on our community page on the Facebook um, official the the official journey community page, right. I do um, I do a, a drop in on a Wednesday kind of yes, unannounced. Yes, I saw that. It's beautiful. And um, one of the questions that came up from, from somebody, and it's just kind of the questions that arise during the week, um, was 
you know, how can I live in source all of the time? <laughs> oh, I saw that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and and that's so beautiful in 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 how you express and how how you to share how yeah. how your week has been because that's that's all we can you know that's what it is is being present to whatever is showing up yeah. in this moment is what that means you know. I, th I thought that was so an interesting asked question. That question. I hope. <laughs> That was, I, I think hope. it was Eva, Eva Can Candor, if I don't know if I'm saying oh, okay. that properly, okay. but I thought it was an interesting question and it, uh, it elicited a, a, a variety of responses and some of them I felt were very profound because, um, and of course, the truth is that source is the core of us, the essence of us. It's the cradle in which form is born and the cradle in which form passes. And so to live in source, uh, I don't know that you can ever live in it because <laughs> it's in you, it's in everything. To conceive of you living in source means that you're conceiving of a separate self aiming to do something. And that's not the truth. The truth is that source is it, is the essence, the one essence. And then this illusion we call life is is taking place in that. Place, now, yeah. what what can happen, of course, is that we lose sight of the truth. And so, if you were to say, "What could I do to experience source all the time, or source more in my life?" That's a very different question, because then it comes to the things that we've been talking about up until now. Where is your attention? Is your attention on the story? Is your intention on the fight you have with life? Is your story on self-justification or blame of others or making sure the rules are all followed in, in order to survive and be safe <laughs> and be who you are? Or is the truth focused on the choicelessness of who you are, the absolute truth of who and what you are, and then, of course, you see that who and what you are is not form, is not thinking, is not emotion. And it's much, much deeper and more profound than that. <laughs> it's something that doesn't come, something that doesn't go. And so then you can rest as source. And uh, that's a very different different experience of life, of course. So great, great question. And um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Our experience of source comes and goes. Yeah. Um, source is, is unaltered by any oh, coming and going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was um, a beautiful way of, of, of adding, adding that in and speaking about that. Um, I'm also aware, and one of the things that we wanted to talk about here tonight is, is the upcoming the book launch, your yeah, book, light, in the heart, <laughs> oh, man. light in the heart of yeah. darkness and the surprising yes. truth about depression and how to free yourself completely yeah. from its grips. I'm thrilled it that it's coming to it was de It's dedicated to your dad, isn't it? It is dedicated to, to dad, to Gabby. Yeah. And, uh, um, and uh, blessedly, he knew the dedication was going in there and he was very moved to read it. He said, oh my gosh. I didn't know you thought of me th that way because uh, I'd be paraphrasing here, but I, I sent gratitude for his positivity, his vision, and his, his big hearted kind of unconditional love. And he said, I, I never knew you, you felt that way about me. And I said, absolutely, Dad, that's what, what I've experienced you as mm -hmm. throughout all the years. And so he was very moved. So he di did know that the, that the dedication was going in. And I'm, I'm so glad that this book is coming out in English. <laughs> it has been through so much refinement and, and editing. I'm just praying that there are no more typos left in the book and that everything that can be said concisely on the subject is in there. Um, as I say at the, an early part of the book, it's not a textbook on depression. It's, um, it's a personal insight and then uh, I hope a revelation based on what can happen to heal depression, to free ourselves completely from depression by using journey work. So mm -hmm. we look at numbers of aspects of depression. I look at what it's not and bust some of the common myths around depression because even though it's, um, it's a topic that is becoming more acceptable to talk about, 
there are still taboos about the subject. There are still fears around discussing it. There's still a lot of lostness about what we do with it. Um, and although I'm glad to see the subject is, is getting more public debate, I'm constantly frustrated that it's framed as a mental illness pre predominantly, yeah. when in truth, depression in its core is not a mental illness. That's not what it is. Mm -hmm. And so people are trying to, to, to address a symptom of depression rather than to treat depression itself. And of course, that doesn't work. Um, you know, if you're trying to treat a stomach ulcer with antacids and you're still eating fried food and getting stressed and, you know, living mm -hmm. an unhealthy lifestyle, then you can mask the symptoms, but you're not getting to the root cause of the, the issue. And the same with depression. Depression absolutely can cause mental illness, but the labeling of it as a mental illness is a complete fallacy. And so I go into some depth at the beginning of the book about what depression is not. It's not a lot of the things that are commonly believed about it. And then we go from there into, okay, if it's none of those things, what is it actually? And I'm very clear that depression is an emotional condition caused by shutdown emotionally, caused by suppressing our emotions. There can be other factors in, in the mix there, of course, and I explore those. But essentially, if we don't avoid emotions by shutting them down, by smothering them, suffocating them, keeping a blanket over them, um, you just, just kind of swallowing them back in life, then we may experience other pain in life, but that pain will not look like depression. It will not be depression. Mm -hmm. And so we look at the different factors. We look at why some people experience depression and others don't. We look at how um, lifestyle factors fit into it, how increasing and repeated stress and trauma and um, I want to say the bombardment by modern media actually feed into the problem and make it worse because we're looking at an epidemic around the world. I mean, I think we're, we're at the moment, I'm, yeah. I'm reading some, something like 360 million people worldwide, I mean, on, on a diagnosed and on medication for depression. It's a huge, huge number. And it's increasing decade on decade at an alarming rate. And I think, you know, until we get really clear with what it is we're handling here, what is it we're facing, and then come to some solid, practical, organic answers, the problem is going to keep getting out of hand. The drugs that people are issued with can have a marginal effect, but they're, they're not curative. They don't free pe people from depression. They can, um, they can, again, mask the symptoms, but they don't get to the underlying causes. And so I look at... What makes depression worse? If you're prone to it, what can really kind of you know, drag you into the depths of depression? And then we explore journey work and the specific way journey work can be used to, um, to, to get to the root cause and to pull it out. It did for me all those years ago. You know, I came to the journey after suffering from cyclical depression since childhood. And I was in my late 30s then, so nearly 30 years of, of depression. And the, the journey work that I underwent absolutely and fundamentally healed it, it just stopped it, you know, absolutely curatively freed me from, from depression and, and its, uh, its associated patterns. And so I know from direct experience what I'm talking about, I've been through it, it's not a theoretical <laughs> book. Uh, it, was, uh, it was emotionally intense to, to write it. And I'm really hoping and praying that the fact that it's not just a description, but a how-to tool book that includes the work, it includes audio files online where people can choose to work with me if they if they, they want to do that, so, so that I can guide them through the process work. I'm hoping that people will see that this is a toolkit for getting to the core causes of depression and clearing them out. And I'm really praying, not for my own benefit in this, but for the benefit of those who suffer from depression, that we get all the help we can in getting this book out there and into the hands of those who are suffering and who feel uh, hopeless about their condition and who are looking for, for a different way to, to truthfully handle this, to, to uh, I mean, just take things into their own hands, to then, from that place, make a decision and ask for help. 
and be guided into into what can really free them from from this horrible debilitating condition so i am really looking forward after you know, this time after writing it uh, looking forward to the the book getting out there and hopefully to the whole journey community coming together to make the word known that they i think in in the written information i've i've continually said you know we we will let you know we will let you know so right. we're we're well we're beyond the middle of september and we've just realized that the book had a few more edits to go through and a few more we uncovered a few more mistakes <laughs> so i think that uh, hopefully it doesn't cost any more than a week but it still means that we're a little bit away from the official launch which will first of all happen or the international english launch i should say happens via amazon so the very first run is an ebook that comes out on amazon and that's when we will let you know there is going to be a period where the book will be available at a very reduced um, amount of money and we ask you to join in you know you will have an information from us you will get an, an email from us we will share it on facebook we haven't got the exact date because we don't know what the last final um in, in, in the, the last final edits how long that is going to take i hope it's going to be done in a few days so that means by the time we are ready with with this amazon launch we're probably going to take about two to three weeks and then it will be available at that point please let everyone know you will have the amazon link you know you can buy it for them you can you can do whatever it will be available not only as an ebook it will also be available as a printed book so that's the time when we're asking for your help to, to just get it, to share it. You know, um, I remember one of the early discussions we had with, uh, with, um, with a publisher friend and he said, you know, depression is just not a very sex sexy subject, you know, and it's, um, it is, but it's important. It's really, really important that we get the book out. So if people aren't seeing it because they have their head down or they're not aware get it for them you know wrap it in a christmas paper and get it for them or do something or encourage them um so that's I what's coming. Say there as well Kev. i really want yes. to ask people if they would help by leaving reviews and good reviews hopefully yes. five star reviews for the book <laughs> the way these things work with amazon's algorithms is is yes it's a function of sale numbers but it's also a function of the star rating of a book and i would be really really grateful if if as well as buying as well as recommending that people would take the time and follow the yes. link to leave to leave good reviews for the book to tell people the effect that this work can have um so that as well please perfect yes absolutely that and we will ask that of you when 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 the link is being sent. I've just had a question from um, from um, from the Netherlands, asking if it will be in Dutch also. Well, the great news is that around about exactly the same time, the book is going to be available in Dutch language in Netherlands, and there is actually a pre-launch evening this coming Friday in the Netherlands in Amsterdam in the Rai Center. And um, you would have, if, if you are in the Netherlands, just go on the journey uh, Facebook pages. Arnold is posting, he's letting everybody know what's going on. But um, I, I couldn't pronounce the Dutch title, but it, oh, you can, um, Jacqueline <laughs> is just saying it's on ball.com. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they're coming in. But it's as of Friday, the book will be available. But according to the publisher, it's still pre-launch time. The actual launch date is the 10th of October, which is when you and Brandon will be available for a press conference um, in right. Amsterdam. Yes, and, uh, so, so, yes, the book will be available. It is already available in German language. It's called Goodbye Depression. That was the first country that had it and it's doing extremely well. Some of the feedback that's coming from the book is blow away. So I'm so, so happy and it's so overdue now that this book is finally coming. Yeah. It's on the last hurdle right now. So we're nearly, nearly there. And um, that kind of just takes me into once, once the book is out, there will also be some uh, two day um, seminars um, live seminars with um, some some of them with Kevin, some of them with our presenters, 
We have a few scheduled in uh, in Europe. So Kevin is teaching one in the UK. Um, Arnold is teaching one in in in, in Amsterdam. Um, Bet is teaching one in Finland. Marie Sylvie in Ottawa. So uh, Bet Bet is in Finland. Whoever oh Kevin is in Austra Australia also. So there's five seminars for. Um, and the actual seminar to go alongside the book is actually called Out of the Blue. So it's, it's um, what would you say, Kevin, for, for people, what's, how, how would you direct people from the journey intensive or the Out of the Blue? My, my, my version would be if, you know, if, if, you, if you have a strong thirst to really let go of this and if you feel yourself ready to just come to yeah. the journey intensive. That would be my instinct as well, Gab. I would, yeah. I would say, first of all, get to whatever you can. Uh, yeah. this, the Journey Intensive is a three-day event, as a lot of people will know, so it's going to be in more depth than we can cover in two days at, out of the blue. And recognizing that with depression, people often need to take it kind of baby step at a time. Oh, the smart. Out of the yeah. Blue will be more accessible, will be um, more simple than, than the Journey Intensive. And so it's meant to be an introduction. It's meant to be those those kind of first initial steps into into uh, realizing what what depression is and what can be done about it, and then taking the the initial steps to to exploring with with journey work. So, um, if somebody's up for the journey intensive, I would say go for that. If they're a little more tentative, then come and join us in in out of the blue, and yeah. and we'll we'll kind of um, pace and lead in a in a, 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 a more subtle way. That let's let's say to take into account uh, you know, what what people experience when they're suffering from depression. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, if you want to find out when these events are, if you go to our website, thejourney.com, on the top tab, there is entry level events and you have all of Brandon's events there. So it's Journey Intensive with Brandon Base. Out of the Blue is the two day workshop for, uh, for depression or, or freedom from depression. So this is how you find out. It's it's you've got three main sections there: journey intensive with Brandon, journey experience with our presenters around the world, and out of the blue uh, with either Kevin or some of our presenters. And all of those sections, you have a description of the workshop, you have the presenter, the date, and everything. And so you can also share that. So just to let you know how to find out exactly where everything is and how how to know what's happening when. Great. So, Kevin, we're doing really great. We, um, <laughs> I wanted to also... That's a great note sheet you've got there, Gab. I've got to say, your, your, your guided notes there look about the size of a table. <laughs> How many notes can do you see that? There? <laughs> can you see you. that? When you turn it back and forth, we can see, see that? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure I don't forget anything. Oh, that's okay, good. Good. Yeah. Right. I am um, having the privilege of have you to, to have you here on this program also, Kevin. I'm, I wanted to ask you or speak to you a little bit about the Life Coach program or the Journey Accredited Life Coach uh, Training, yeah, sure. as we call it officially. This is something that is very new on our schedule. Yes. Um, we've been trying to kind of let people know, but it kind of, there's always, there's, there have been so many informations this year that I'm, I, I think yeah. sometimes things fall, fall through the sure. cracks. Of course. And, and I was, you know, when, when I'm back in the UK, uh, I see a lot of your, your private coaching clients um, come and leave. And I also see what happens with them shortly after yeah, sure. and I'm blown away constantly what you what happens in in the time that you spend with with people and I believe and this is what I have said uh, in in my communication to the practitioners that this is what will flow into the uh, journey practitioner life coach accreditation or the life coach training yes and as we're here together I just wanted to ask a little, you know, if you can share a little bit about the training, and if I have any try, more questions, try, I'll, okay, okay. I'll try, <laughs> try and make it as concise as I can, Gab. I mean, obviously, with the journey practitioner track and the follow on events to that, Brandon is, is teaching extraordinary and profound skills how to work with people therapeutically to change any issue in their life. 
And often we're dealing with health issues, we're dealing with emotional issues, we're dealing with old wounds and traumas and cell memories and allowing people to access a genius healing capacity inside, which, which is, I mean, the most extraordinary thing I've ever witnessed when it's unleashed and people actually start to heal. Mm. What I recognized a good number of years ago is that there is also the call to work with people structurally in life that a lot of people are just struggling, but they don't recognize they've got an emotional issue. People recognize they've got blocks in their family life. They recognize that they've got blocks um, in their careers, that they've got abundance blocks, that things are just not panning out the way they want them to pan out. And they don't feel good about it, but they don't recognize it again as an emotional issue. They recognize it more as a practical issue, that they feel stuck and they don't know what to do. And so I started to, to work with people like this more on a coaching basis several years ago. And it becomes clear that all the journey work that we've ever learned can, can play a significant part in this, but that we need different skills as well. We need more structure. We need to work with people starting where they're at. And we need to be able to identify and to act on that information, which is, what is causing the shutdowns, the stopping points, the hiatus that they may be experiencing in life? And then what do we do with that? What do we track it back to? Now, it comes back to fixation at all times. So we definitely need good skills around the Enneagram. And it's why to come to this course, you need to have gone through the Enneagram Masterclass with me. You need more insights than you will have learned at No Ego. No ego is a personal journey. It's a, a journey into a true awakening to who we're not, who we are, and, and what we've been avoiding all our lives so we can turn to face what was previously unfaceable. But with the Enneagram Masterclass, we're learning much deeper, more nuanced teachings from the Enneagram. We're learning some of its hidden revelations, and we're really using these in practical ways that we can, we can apply in our own lives and with clients. And then with the Authentic Greatness course, that's also a requirement. We're learning what keeps the lampshade on. We're learning what really is required and different techniques to handle. Diving into specific blocks that we may still be asleep to, in spite of becoming a practitioner and doing huge amounts of work with ourselves and other people, there are still very specific flavors of blocks that we commonly experience in life. And so authentic greatness teaches us to wake up to those and to use additional skills to meet these very specific issues, to un unleash I mean, the vitality, the, the genius, the powerhouse, the, the vision, the surrender that's inside all of us. And so all of this will then come to bear in the, uh, 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 the journey uh, coaching accreditation where I am going to spend uh, whatever it is, I think five and a half days with people, really bringing things down to the deepest level that I know how to, how to articulate, identifying, um, I think it's seven separate areas that we can, can look at. And I'm not talking about life areas, I'm talking, <clears throat> talking about a, a sequence of blocks and recognitions that can be worked with and undone in order that people become absolutely fulfilled in the way they're meant to be in life, that they live not just with a sense of wholeness, but a sense of purpose and like the pull of grace guiding them in life. So it's quite different in structure from journey work, although of course it uses essential journey skills. Um, it, it is a specialist area and a lot of us are attracted to work in that way. I mean, I, I work in a very specific way with clients because I travel so much. I work with a, a, a one short day intense coaching session and it produces amazing results. Even for people who've done huge amounts of journey work on themselves, it gets in so deeply and resolves things that they're, they're not even aware of. It, you know, they know the symptoms, they know the journey work they've done, they know some of the answers, but they can't fit the pieces of the puzzle together to find out why they're still feeling this way, why they're still blocked in life. And I'm hoping that during this this um, coaching training that we're going to put those pieces of the puzzle into place as far as that is possible and then learn to to let go. 
you know, with Brandon, she says there's no formula here. And so even when we think we can see what the puzzle is, we've still got to surrender and let life guide us, let grace be the doer in this. And magic can happen. And so in terms of working with professional people, coaching them, mentoring them, men mentoring them, guiding them in life, that's what we're aiming for. Several years ago, I did um, a short course on this, just like over a weekend, which just began yeah. to, to kind of uh, scratch the surface of it. But in five and a half days, this is going to be a completely different animal. So uh, it's for that, Gabby. If people want to work with professionals, if they want to work structurally, strategically with people in life, if they want to build longer term relationships with their clients, um, this would be the thing to do. Okay, great. Well, I'm. I can't wait. I'm. Uh, I'm coming. So I, I shall be there. I very much look forward to it. And just for those uh, for those practitioners who are here on the call, just to let you know that um, in order to there is what the, the very very first um, life coach training program takes place this October, and for this you would have had to have done the Enneagram Masterclass and either the Visionary Leadership Program or at least VL one and two, and um, or authentic greatness, which I think was for the first time this year. So um, last year, this year, yes, it was, last it was, year and this started, year, started, yeah. started about a year ago and, and yeah. went into doing it this year, yes. So either either authentic greatness or visionary leadership and Enneagram masterclass. So those two programs will would qualify you to participate in the life co coach training, which takes place in October. So just wanted to say that, and if this is um, more new to you, if you're one of our newer practitioners and you haven't done those programs, you can take part. Enneagram Masterclass is happening in November this year. It's actually taking place in Spain. Our lovely Claire has found an amazing hotel right by the sea. So Kevin, you will be enjoying that. I can I'm see definitely going to enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, and then uh, authentic greatness is next year, and then uh, followed with the next the next program. So, but that's a little while away now, just in order to get the other programs in. So that's the sequence. Journey practitioner master it belongs into that too, and um, it's one of our shorter programs, three and a half days. So a lot of our practitioners have this program in any case, and it allows you to work more fluidly, more more um, on an energetic level um, as, as a continuation from the from the journey practitioner program. But it's really the, the the authentic greatness and the Enneagram masterclass that are so, so absolutely necessary in order to go through that program. So um, I think it's coming up. Um, I don't think I've forgotten anything. We're coming up to questions. And uh, it was, it's very, very strange trying to look at you, Kevin, trying to think, should I look at my camera? And then there is <laughs> comments coming in on the side. So I'm a little bit kind of, if okay. I look a little bit here, there or everywhere. I had, I, I saw um, one, one question here. Uh, dear Kevin, can you tell me the difference is, what, what is the difference between your previous workshop out of the blue for practitioners a couple of years ago given in the Netherlands and your upcoming workshop shop freedom from depression for practitioners in England. I think that's the same pretty much. It's the same, same one, Cap. I, th I think it's just the same name. We changed it some time ago. So if it was a practitioner two-day training, it's the same thing. Now, the Great. what we've done now is we've called that freedom from depression training for practitioners. That's an intense two days predicated on Enneagram knowledge, pr predicated on people being yeah. practitioners. The out of the blue that I'm offering to the public is a two-day uh, introductory experiential course, so not uh, offering the background or the in-depth insights that uh, that we we went through in in the practitioner training. Different different thing altogether. But the, the those two, if it's a practitioner training, then um, same thing. Just we changed the name some time ago for clarity. Yeah. Great. Um, Jacqueline is asking also from, from the Netherlands, will Kevin be doing the NBJ Pay workshop? Yes, he is. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. So please make sure you I'm get looking, in touch. Looking forward to connecting back in Holland. Uh, I'm coming back and for Holland a few times this, uh, this autumn and uh, really looking forward to, to connecting with everyone there and uh, 
sharing together, sharing whatever can be shared, and just uh, I, mean, I, I, I don't know, steeping and and finding out fresh ways that we can reach out to people, make a difference, build our practices, this this type of thing. So I'm I'm deeply looking forward to to that. Beautiful. I'm just going to scroll a little bit. If if there are any more questions from anybody, please uh, let me know. I'm just scrolling through. There's a lot of Dutch here. I don't speak Dutch, guys. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> <laughs> post them. Post them. If they if they're posted, maybe Arnold can answer them. Oh, I think posted? it was about. I think it was about the book. Okay. It, it was about the book in Dutch, and they kind yeah. of helped each other find out. Okay, great. No, that was uh, when you spoke about your dad. There were a lot of love and blessings coming through. So Beautiful. that's thank you. Much. Thank you. Thanks. No one was able. No one was able to answer this question. Oh, really? Oh, what if about the workshop? Sorry, that that's uh, Anneke um, is saying that no one was able to answer the questions about the difference if it's different from the out of the blue for practitioners okay well now you've got okay. the answer the can workshop. you please share it practitioners were the same they may have had different names in the past the new workshop out of the blue is a two-day training specifically for newcomers so simple as that great perfect i i'm i'm just getting big hugs and thanks what about Thank yes you. it was about the book we indeed helped each other. Yes, that's okay. <laughs> see my yeah. Dutch is sufficient to there figure you that go. one out. There you go. <laughs> translate it to German and then um, to English. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's a little bit of a mix of both languages, so yes. I'm doing okay. All right, Gabor, yeah, well, it's been a Can pleasure we... to connect with you. Thank you so much for inviting me on and giving me this this opportunity to um, just speak from what's been going on. It's been an intense week, but it's been beautiful to to just connect with you and to to open up and, and share with people from that place you know and thank you so much for during this time to Great come pleasure. and share from this place and just know that um our love our hearts will surround you next week especially when it. you're with uh, with your thank family you. and dad's funeral so I all of our that. love many many Beautiful. blessings and thank you so much for thank being you here so tonight. much gary and love to everyone who's been been tuned in and will tune in so big <laughs> namaste and hugs thank you very very thank much. you thank you thank you thank you goodbye good night bye -bye. i need to find the end button <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs>